there, Sabrina here. Today I'm gonna to share with you five ways that you can connect with God in prayer and what to do when you can't feel his presence. Before we get into this video, I'll first tell you a little bit about me. I am non-denominational. I don't side with any one faith. I believe there is good in every single denomination. Somewhere we can always learn something from every single denomination out there. But I don't identify with any one of them because I feel that leads to religion over relationship. And that is not what we're called to. We are called to have a relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit not to be in religion because religion can lead you into being a Pharisee. So just give you a baseline of where I'm at with everything that I'm sharing here with you today. I believe the whole Bible, everything in the Word of God is for today. And so that's what I believe. One of the first things that you can do in prayer is worship. In his word, he says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and praise. And so usually when I begin praying, I will begin with worship. I find more encounters with God have happened through worship and worship alone. And when you spend time giving gratitude and thanks to God, it fills your heart with joy. And I have encountered the joy of the Lord through worship. I have started busting out and laughing. I have Mom, cried. Mom, fixed it. Awesome, Jet, good job. <laughs> like I was saying, I have cried. I have truly felt his presence more so in worship. The second way to connect with God is to give thanks for everything. I find that in giving thanks for every single thing, it leads me into a deeper level of prayer with him. And you can begin by thanking him for small things even. You can thank him for the sky, you can thank him for water, you can thank him for your immune system, your circulatory system. You could go through the whole anatomy, thank him for every single thing because he created everything. And it's endless, the list is endless of the things that you can give God thanks for. And once you start thanking him, you will again begin to feel that joy wash over you. And you start to realize too that God is the giver of everything that you have. Nothing comes by our hands, but it comes by his. So when we give him thanks, that's a form of worship. It's a form of praise. And it helps to keep us grounded in the sense that we rely on him for everything. Third thing that you can do in prayer with God is meditate on scripture. And this is really powerful, especially if you are looking for revelation on a particular scripture and you want a deeper understanding of it, or if you're struggling with something in the flesh and you want to overcome it. So I'll just give you an example here. Let's say, like I've had a problem with anger in my past. Something that I would meditate on in the past is love is patient, love is kind. And so I would just sit there and run it through my mind. Love is patient, love is kind, love is patient, love is kind. Focus on more of the verse if you want to. Love doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing. This is 1 Corinthians 13, by the way, 13, 8, I believe. And just continue to recite the verse in your head. You can do this for upwards of 30 minutes. I know it seems like a long time to do it, but once you start meditating on it, and visualizing it in your mind and focusing on the verse, you're going to be amazed not only at breakthroughs that you have just by pure meditation, but also revelations that you may receive just from thinking on that verse. Fourth thing that you can do in prayer is pray in the spirit or pray in tongues. And this is why I said I'm non-denominational. I just believe the word. If you go to Jude, we're actually instructed in the end times to pray in the Spirit. If you go to the book of Jude and read through, let's see, chapter 1, verse 18. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ until eternal life. So it tells us right there, in the end times, there are going to be mockers. There are going to be those who go after their ungodly lusts. And there are going to be those who do not have the spirit. But we are instructed to build up our faith 
by praying in the Holy Spirit. And so this is a gift that is for today. If you want, I can do more teaching on it. It's a very powerful gift. And when you allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you, not only is he praying perfect prayers for you, he's praying the Father's will for you, he's praying what you need in that moment for you, and you are able to stay in prayer longer because there's a lot of times when I don't even know what to pray. I have no idea. And I'm like, what do I do? And praying in tongues helps us to stay in prayer longer. And it also invites in the presence of the Lord. So it's a very powerful gift that many people have discounted and discarded and they don't understand how necessary it is to our walk with Christ because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. Why wouldn't we want the Holy Spirit to be praying for us and through us. Last thing that you can do in prayer is to sit in silence and meditate on God. This is the hardest thing to do for most believers. And I did struggle with it when I first started doing it. Sitting in silence and one, not falling asleep and two, not getting distracted are very real challenges. And so when I sit in silence, I sit in silence and I meditate on God. And I picture Jesus standing in front of me. I picture the Lord on his throne. And that's what I do. And I just sit in silence. And you'll be amazed at when you sit in silence, you'll begin to hear things come to you in your spirit. A lot of the times we're praying so much and we're speaking so much. And then we say, I can't hear God. It's because we're not sitting still and listening. Now, for those of you who have said, I can't feel God, help me, I can't feel him. I do this and I do that and I still can't feel him. The key to feeling God is worship. And I'm gonna share two scriptures with you here that demonstrate that. If you go to Isaiah 6, two through three, it reads, above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face and with twain, he covered his feet and with twain, he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So the seraphim angels are the ones that are at the throne of God. And notice what they're doing here. They are worshiping him. If you go over to the book of Revelation, chapter four, verses eight through 11, they read, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. So again, you see, you can't be in the presence of God without worshiping him. And then verse 10, the four and 20 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Worship attracts God. It always has, it always will. So when you worship, you are inviting the presence of God to you. And let's not discount too how powerful worship is. If you could see what worship does in the spiritual realm, it would motivate you further. So I'll just share with you that I'm a seer. I see into the spiritual realm and I have been able to see what happens in worship many times. And what happens is when your words go up, they actually are weapons. They're like little daggers. They go up in the spirit and they begin to break up Satan's kingdom. Like you will see structures begin to fall just in worship. You will begin to see things being broken over your head. I prophesied to a young woman recently and I could see a block over her head because she's dealing with a massive amount of grief right now. She lost her mother very recently and it's been really hard for her to overcome it. And I felt so bad for her. But as I was listening to the Lord speak, he said, there's a block over your head. And I got an image of her worshiping. And as she worshiped, the block began to break apart. It started to crumble and it started to fall to the ground. And the Lord was saying, if you just worship, if you just lift up your voice and praise, it, it's such a powerful weapon and it we really discount the power that worship brings into our lives. No matter what you're dealing with right now, sorrow, anger, grief, sadness, depression, whatever it is, the word specifically tells us for a spirit of heaviness, put on a garment of praise. Praise 
breaks things in the spirit. It tears down walls that are being built up against you in the spiritual realm by the enemy, designed to further crush you, designed to hinder you, designed to block you. And so we really discount the power of our voices and partnering with God, inviting his presence in. Because let me tell you, evil can't stand in the presence of God. It just can't. And so if you've got the presence of God around you, in your home, that's gonna send the enemy running. So before we go, let me pray over you. Father, I lift up every single person who has watched this video, everyone at the sound of my voice, Lord. I pray that you will fill them to overflowing with your love, Father. I pray that you will give them a hunger and a thirst for the deeper things of you, Father. I pray that you will set them on fire to seek after you in prayer, to seek after you in worship. Let them not forget the power and the authority that Jesus has given them, not through carnal things, but through spiritual things, spiritual weapons, Father. I ask for the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, to go into every single heart that has heard this message and to plant every word that was spoken deep within the spirits of those who have heard these words today. Let them not forget how to connect with you, Father, how to seek your face, and how to break the plans of the enemies over the enemy over their lives. We give you all the honor, glory, praise, and thanks, Father. May this video glorify you. May it bring others to a deeper understanding and a deeper revelation of who you are and how to access you. May it set their prayer life on fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. If this blessed you today, you're always welcome to subscribe for more content like this. I speak love, peace, and joy into you and into your home. Thank you for being here, for taking the time to watch. I look forward to seeing you again very soon.